about uh, IntelliG code, um, the specifically the uh, tracing of pictures function. So um, let me just open that up. Um, it's under SimpleCAD, and um, I'm just going to leave a default canvas here. Um, this is actually kind of a separate program, but um, but but it allows you to export to AutoCAD too. So that's something that you can um, that's something to keep in mind. So um, if you want to uh, add clip art to SimpleCAD, um, you can actually do that manually by using the bitmap to vector import. Um, also, I'm planning to include some uh, libraries pretty soon. I'm, I've been uh, fixing them and, and categorizing them at the moment, but um, we're not quite there yet. But uh, let's talk about the, uh, the bitmap to v vector function um, specifically. And um, let me just uh, say also, in order to um, in order to save it into the clip art feature inside of um, SimpleCAD, the first thing you have to do is actually go to the clip art settings and put in a directory. Once you have the directory in there, then you can go ahead and um, you can you can import things. All right, so the way this this program works is you load an image, and uh, I'm just gonna pick some silly images here just to give you an idea another side note is that <coughs> this frame here um, it always blows the image up to fit within the frame or if it's too large it'll shrink the image to fit in the frame so but the processing itself always happens on the existing original picture so when you actually export it it will be you know the existing original picture in size um, as far as exporting it to uh, AutoCAD goes. So um, the way this works is all of these settings up here uh, control how the tracing function works within uh, the picture. And um, you'll see here on the current filter trace, this is where we actually, um, these settings will actually adjust this part of the, the program. And um, You'll notice there's also a refresh button because if you if you type something in these boxes, you just hit refresh and it'll refresh that based on those picture those um, settings. But uh, this one is real time if you leave this real time uh, checked, and this for the most part is the one that you'll be using the most. That probably in this right here, which is a noise reduction, um, you could put this a large number, you know, 50, 100 pixels, 200 pixels, depending on where you know how how much noise you might have on the picture. But um, in this particular instance, you'll notice that I can, I can go up to about right here, and I'll get these little guys. But I, then if I go further, I get the outline, but I miss the little inside guys. So the reason that I built the program the way I did is I can go ahead and just get these little guys right here. And this little gap, just ignore that for now. I'm, I have, it's actually touching the edge. And um, it, it actually does have a line there. It's just that my my program, I need to expand it just a teeny tiny bit so you'll see it. But uh, it, it works just fine. Don't worry about that right now. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and add this to filtered right here. Add filtered to final. This is the final. And this is the one that you'll actually be exporting. So I'm going to take this filtered. We're going to add it to the final. And you'll notice also <coughs> when I do... I get these loops. Now the loops allows you to uncheck different loops that it traced. And this is nice for really fine tuning your clip art when you have traced things that you don't really necessarily want all the lines in it. <coughs> all right, so we have that and now I want the outside trace too. So I'm gonna add that as well. And now you'll notice I have the whole thing. And at that point I can go ahead and export this and I can either export it to an existing collection if you have existing collections, um, or you could create a new collection. You just give it a collection name and it'll put it in a new collection. Or you can go ahead and save this as a clip art file that other members or users could actually use as well. Or you can actually export it as an AutoCAD DXF file. And once you export it as an AutoCAD DXF file, then you can, of course, pull it into a program like Carbide Create or SketchUp or something like that. 
and I'll, sh I'll demonstrate that really quick here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on um, uh, documents, CAD drawings, and uh, we'll call it um, we'll call it uh, ghost emoji. All right, so we're gonna save the ghost emoji here as a BXF file. <coughs> and I'm also gonna go ahead and put the ghost emoji in a new collection. And uh, we'll just call it this too. Uh, and you see it exported. And um, let me just show you really quick what it looks like in here. You can just click on um, add clip art. And in here, you would uh, go ahead and choose uh, clip art. And um, now, you could v-carve him, but he doesn't, I don't think he would work very well as a v-carve unless you made him really big. But, I mean, really the right size. But um, I'm going to go ahead and just do an engrave cut and um, add him to the project. And you'll notice now you see him here. And um, let me just reset his aspect ratio so it looks right. There you go. And now he's ready to go ahead and uh, generate your G code to actually um, to engrave him. You could use a V bit to do it, and um, you could engrave him just like that. Um, but also, let me just show you that you can also import this guy over here as the ghost emoji here. Import. And now you have him in CAD where you could actually, you know, use, you know, edit him if you needed to here as well. Um, but let me just show you a couple more just so you get an idea of how this works. Um, it's it's very simplistic. It's not it's not rocket science, but I, it, it works very effectively. So here's one. This is a nice pretty little thing that you could probably v-carve. Um, <clears throat> one side note is that when you load it, it doesn't it doesn't change this and you could actually add multiple images to your final by just keep clicking here. So to clear this, you just uh, clear all loops. That's gonna get rid of all the loops over here. And when you add the next one, it'll refresh this. So, all right, so here's our current trace. You'll notice our current trace, we have these two little dots. They're actually supposed to be gaps within the plant, but we probably don't need them. I mean, in reality, it's probably gonna look just fine without those gaps. So let's just go ahead and add these to the filter. And we're just going to uncheck and check them until we find them. Okay, so number five was this little guy right here. That's good. That was one of them. That was one of them. And that was one of them. Okay, good. So the, I only have two loops now. Um, this is one, and this is two. And I can go ahead and export this as well. Um, we'll go ahead and put that in, you know, this two as well. And... Um, and then we can actually add this guy over here too. And we're gonna go ahead and just do an engrave. Actually, we could actually do a V-carve, but um, this one to V-carve, um, I've noticed that most of them are backwards. So um, when I click preview cut, it calculates the cut down here and the blue part is what gets cut. So as you can see, the blue part is outside of the lines. So I'm going to invert the cut and preview it again. And you should notice that it's all blue inside, like that. And that's how you know that it's going to v-carve it properly for you. All right, and then you can just add this to the project as a v-carved image. And um, you could actually put your, your ghost inside here if you wanted to. Um, let me just pull this out a little bit, stretch him out a little bit, All right, and I'm going to set this guy as a background so I don't, um, so I don't move him again, and now I'm going to grab this guy and uh, kind of just center him in here, and there you have it. So that's, that's just to give you an idea of how you can go ahead and um, generate your own clip art um, based on um, vectors. And these, this, this makes it very easy to do that. And the ability to turn on and off individual parts of the trace makes it super nice because then 
any artifacts that you don't want on your final um, on your <clears throat> on your final uh, image, you can kind of get rid of those before uh, without having to manually edit it in CAD, um, and it just makes it very simple to do. Um, <clears throat> you know, to to export from a picture to an actual you know uh, points within a coordinate system. So. That's that's a very it's a very quick way to do that. Um, let me do another one. Here's a, I'm gonna clear the loops here, and um, here's a nice little butterfly. And you'll notice on the butterfly, I, I'm gonna have to adjust this a little bit because I'm not getting exactly what I want. That looks pretty good. Okay, he looks pretty good now. So now I can go ahead and um, I can add this over here, and this is what he's gonna look like on my final and then I can export this as well over here very simple and um, let's do another one um, there's a actually let's do uh, this one will be interesting this one here is a, uh, a silly little chicken thing and um, he actually has a tiny watermark down here but we're not even gonna see that here um, so here we have uh, the chicken and you'll see that every line is traced and all tracing programs for the most part trace a double line because on the on each line there's actually two lines there's the inside and the outside uh, but we don't have to necessarily follow that I mean we can we can v carve it just like that um, however what you can also do is we'll add this to filtered we can go in here and kind of uncheck some of these silly features that don't really matter to the image that much. And we can kind of get an idea, like we don't need that, we don't need that. Okay, we need the eyeball. We don't need that. Uh, yeah, we'll keep the inner one, that's fine. Yeah, we can keep that. We can keep that. And then I'm just basically I'm I'm seeing what what we're keeping and not keeping on the image. Okay, I don't need that. Yeah, we need the beak. We don't need that. We don't need that. Okay, so now we have a chicken that we could actually just do an engrave instead of a V carve with, and um, we can engrave it to a depth based on our V bit, and it'll actually be a faster. Most likely, it'll be a faster tool path um, in doing it this way. So this is just gives you an idea of what you can do, and I just wanted to let you guys get an idea of how you can use this uh, very quickly to take an image that maybe you found on the internet and put it into uh, a vector that can be carved on your machine. Just remember that <coughs> if it is a copyrighted image, that's you know that's on you. I, <laughs> I don't have any control on that as far as you selling it or not selling it or what you do with it. If it's for personal use, probably nobody's going to make any difference. It's not gonna, nobody's going to know. It doesn't make any difference. But um, if you're selling it, um, either make sure that you have permission to the clip art to sell it, or uh, it's something that you generated yourself or created yourself, or it's something very generic that nobody's even going to know. By that I mean, um, like, here's a, here's a good instance of that, um, a heart. So... The chances are nobody is ever going to have any idea that you um, you use their heart um, because, I mean, anybody can draw a heart and there's a thousands and millions of hearts out there. So the chances of you getting caught by using somebody else's heart is probably almost impossible. Like, you, nobody's ever going to be able to figure that out. But if it's something like the Mac logo or the Apple logo, then yeah, you, you're probably gonna be in trouble if you use this because obviously this is copyrighted. So you can't just go and use uh, you know something like this. But I just wanted you to know that you could do this. If maybe somebody approaches you with a business logo and they want that carved, you could probably take a picture of it, use this program to generate the paths, and then you could carve them their sign that they need. Obviously, you would have their permission to do that at that point because they would be giving you the job to do it with their own logo. So anyways, 
Alright, so I think that's it for this video, and I hope you guys get an idea of how to use it. Thanks.